Hi everyone, and welcome to this chapter of the Free Dart course. Um, in this chapter, we're going to be talking about abstract classes. And abstract classes, if you get them, you get them. But if you are having some difficulty understanding what they are and why they're so useful, then you're probably at a at a stage with many other Dart developers or Flutter developers who are kind of stuck at this point. So. In this chapter, I want to clear up some of those points that a lot of developers have problems with when it comes to abstract classes. So the definition of an abstract class in Dart is a class that cannot be in initialized, meaning that you can't call its constructor directly to create a variable. However, abstract classes can actually have constructors. So <clears throat> what we're going to do in this chapter is actually talk a little bit about that. Why would an abstract class have the ability to have a constructor and at the same time won't be able to be constructed and initialized directly. <clears throat> so abstract classes, they are kind of like they can put on different masks, uh, in my opinion, at least in that they can either contain just abstract methods and getters, for instance, of variables that they put constraint on their subclasses to implement, or they could actually or actually, it's and or because they can have abstract methods and abstract variables, and also they can have functions or methods with default implementations. So, in in a way, they're kind of similar to traits in uh, Rust, or if you're familiar with protocols in Swift, they're kind of similar to that as well. And I think also interfaces in Java allow you to also have default implementation for some of the variables, but as for the functions. But I'm not a Java developer, so I can't be sure about that, but I've just heard something along those lines. <clears throat> so what we're going to do in this chapter is, as you will see also in all the other chapters in this course, we're going to create a template project or a sample project, and we're going to build upon that project and just keep adding code or removing code. So let's go ahead and create the uh, project for this chapter. Going to do some reshuffling on the screen, and I'm going to bring up my terminal here. And let's go there. Hopefully, you can see the screen. And I'm going to actually, I don't even know what that was. I pasted there. I'm going to create a um, project here. We're going to call it abstract classes course. So let's say clutter create um, abstract classes course. And for me, I'm just going to add an organization here, but you don't have to do this. OK. So this is going to create our project for us. And I'm going to say abstract classes course. And I'm going to bring up Visual Studio Code. All right. Uh, oops, I don't know what happened. I'm going to close this terminal. I'm going to bring a Visual Studio code, increase the size a little bit, and let's go to our main Dart file here. And I'm going to remove all of that and replace it with just a simple project for now. OK? You don't have to do all of this. It's just uh, I, I'm creating basically a template Flutter project so that we can test our Dart code, because yes, Dart is a language for Flutter developers or for Flutter generally. After having done this, let's go ahead and also create a little Git uh, repository for our code. I mean, we don't have to actually create it remotely. We're just going to say Git anything here. OK. Neat. Perfect. So um, let's go ahead and have a look at the state. Yeah, some files there. We haven't really checked them in yet. That's fine. So um, we're going to be doing some logging in this chapter. So um, and by that, I mean, I'm just going to run the code as well while I'm talking. So we're going to be do, doing some logging in this code in that we're going to print some stuff to the screen. And there are different ways of doing this. You can either use debug print or you can use print. But I prefer to use log, which is something that's shipped with Dart. So um, we're going to create this little extension on object that allows us to log any object. OK, so let's go ahead and import Dart developer and say as dev tools show log. OK, so there's a built in function called log uh, in Dart developer package, which you can use to log your um, strings to the console. So let's go ahead and say extension log on object. OK, and then we're going to say void um, log. And we're just going to say div tools dot log. And we're going to say to string. And that's it, really. So this is going to allow us to, for instance, say, um, let's say in here, we can say hello log. OK. 
Oh, that's our little extension. I can also see our app is running here, right there. Okay. So I'm going to change the size of Visual Studio Code a little bit and keep the debug console up because we're going to be using the debug console quite a bit. Perhaps maybe move it right here so that we don't have to see it so much right now. And I'm completely aware that the bottom part of the screen is kind of like blocked by the title and subtitle that I'm displaying. So I'm going to do my best to make sure you see the entire content when the time comes actually to looking at the debug console. All right. So let's go ahead and create a little abstract class here, which is like the goal of this chapter. And we're going to call this uh, class can run. Okay. So um, here is an abstract class and we're going to call it can run. So the goal here is to create a, a class that we can then bring into other classes and give them the ability to run. For instance, if we create a class called cat or a class called dog, then these classes are going to have the ability to run. That's the goal of this abstract class, OK? So what we're going to do then is to define an abstract method in this class, and we're going to call it just void run, OK? So I'm also looking at my notes in here just to make sure that I'm telling you all the things that I plan to tell you. So as you can see, here's an abstract class has absolutely no logic. The only logic that it has at the moment is that, is that, that it says, I have a method here called run. It returns no values. It doesn't accept any parameters, but it's just a method that is there. So as you'll soon see, any class that extends this abstract class will have to implement this run method. Okay. So let's go ahead and define a class in here and call it class cat. And in here, um, what we want is to tell it that this cat class actually inherits from the can run abstract class with the words, with the keyword extends in here. So we say can run. So as you can see, we immediately get a little error here that says um, missing concrete implementation of can run the run, which is our abstract method. Uh, here, Dart is saying that, hey, you're saying that you're extending can run but you're not implementing all its abstract functionalities, OK? So a lot of developers, I've noticed, they, they're kind of confused with, uh, they're confused about what extends actually means compared with the word with. Because there is also word, a keyword in Dart called with and another one called extends. And the simplest way to explain this is that extends will inherit from that particular thing. And Dart has the ability to inherit from maximum of one thing. Whereas with the with keyword, you can basically bring in code from other classes, and there's really no limit on how many of those classes you can bring in. OK, so for instance, if we remove this function that we don't get this error at the moment, and I create another class in here, say can walk, abstract class, I can basically say it can walk here as well. So there's multiple of those clauses in here, but I can't say it extends both of them. So there you have the definition of extends versus with. But let's not get uh, distracted. Let's just go ahead and have it as we had it right here with a run function in there. So um, and I'll also bring up this little uh, caption in here, which I talked about briefly in, in that when we say with, uh, we're basically bringing in functionality from something that Dart usually calls a mix-in. We're not going to talk about mix-ins in this chapter. Mix-ins are kind of like abstract classes, uh, but they have no logic. They're kind of like interfaces without implementation. So we're not going to talk about with so much in this chapter. We're just going to say extends, OK? So um, mix-ins are something that I'm going to actually explain um, in another chapter. I'm not sure if it's going to follow along, like follow right after this chapter, but I'm going to dedicate a whole separate chapter in this free dark course to make sense. So stay tuned for that. So let's go ahead in here and fix this issue in, uh, that Visual Studio Code is highlighting here. It's saying that we're not implementing the run function. As you can see, I mean, the most important part of abstract classes is, is that they find an interface that they're inherited classes or the classes that they mix that abstract class in with using the with keyword, 
they have to implement those functions. So it's it's an interface basically. So I'm gonna get help from Visual Studio Code using command dot on Mac or control dot using Linux or Windows and say, create one missing override. And as you can see here, it's using the override. Um, how would you call this a meta tag? Perhaps we could call it to say that, hey, this run function is not something that we're making up ourselves in this class, in the cat class, but it's actually something that we're overriding from our super class, which is in this case, can run abstract class, okay? So here we fix that issue and then we have an override void run and there's no functionality in it, but at least we made it so that Visual Studio, oh, sorry, Dart is happy about this code. So there's no errors on the screen. So that was our first step to commit. Let me bring up uh, here so you can see. Okay, let's go ahead and commit our code. So I'm going to go to the terminal and going to say git add all and git commit step one. All right, I'm going to go to my notes as well to make sure that I can actually go to step two as well so I can see all the code that I have to explain to you. So it's just a little process. Okay, um, great. So Let's have a look a little bit about this method that we wrote here. Uh, as you can see at the moment, it has no logic. It, it's not doing anything and it is just a, an interface. It's, a, it's basically a constraint on any class that implements can run saying that this, all those classes have to implement the run function. However, abstract classes as abstract methods can actually contain code in that you can literally just go in here and say, this is some code, just write your code in here. So you can see that you're not gonna get any errors in here and Dart is completely happy about that. So in the case of you adding code to an abstract function inside an abstract class, you effectively make that function not abstract anymore. So this is an abstract function or an abstract method inside an abstract class. However, if you add functionality to it, it's not, an abstract method anymore. It's just a normal function inside an abstract class. So abstract kind of means empty, you could say. All right, so no logic means abstract. Logic means no abstract. <laughs> so that's the easiest way I can explain it. So let's go ahead um, and add some log to this guy. All right, so let's say in here, can runs uh, run function it's called, okay? And then we're just gonna log this just like that. All right, uh, and what we're gonna do is to actually test our code. So what we need to, I mean, at the moment we've created this little cat guy in here and we have can run, but there's no way we can actually test this. So let's go ahead in here and add a little function in here, void test it, okay, like that. And in here, we're gonna say final cat, is a cat and we're gonna say cat run. Okay, so we're gonna call this run function on it. But no one is calling this tested function, someone has to call it. So let's go ahead in just the build function in our homepage, just say test it, okay? Right there. So every time I press command S, then that code is gonna be run. I'm gonna actually do a hot restart here. Uh, I'm gonna bring up the debug console, okay? So. So let's have a look at this demo now. We're sure that this test it function is being called because I can just say test it log. And every time I press command S, I can see that it's being printed, test it. However, there is no run logs in here. And as you can see, this run function, even though it's overriding its abstract classes run function, this log is not being printed to the screen. So we have, we have a little bit of a problem in there in that we are overriding a super uh, function from our super class, which in this case is the can run abstract class. However, we're not running the code in that method. So we're kind of losing the implementation inside this run function by overriding it. So there is no call to super in this case, okay? So it would be really good if you could actually tell, like if there's important logic in your abstract, in your default implementations of your functions inside your abstract classes, it would be really good if you could tell your subclasses that, hey, you have to call super on this case. Super is a reference to your, uh, to the class that you're extending from, okay? So in this case, super 
refers to this can run abstract class. So it would be really good if you could just say super run, but you kind of make it mandatory for your subclasses to do. Thankfully, there is a really good um, meta tag that you can add to your functions, whether they're abstract in, in their whether they're in abstract classes or not, you can actually tell any subclasses to have to override those, uh, sorry, to have to call the super function when they override that function. So you can do that, I believe, if we just go and bring a must call super on, it, on this. So we say must call super, you see right there. And then all of a sudden, this function gets a little warning. If I remove that, the warning goes away. But if I bring it back, it says this method overrides a method annotated as, mu as must call super. And the rest is but doesn't invoke the overwritten. OK, so what we're going to do in here is just going to say that we actually are going to call super in here. OK, so let's say super run. And then we're going to add some code in here. So let's call it cat running dot log. And then I'm going to bring up the debug console in here, and I'm going to press Command S. Now you can see after after doing that, you can see that can runs run function is called first, and then the cats run function is called. And that is simply because in our test functionality here in this test function, we said cat run, but remember inside cat run, we're actually calling super run first, which executes this code. Hence, we see the log message like this first. And then we're seeing the code in here being run. And that is logging this message. All right, so that's perfect. Let's go ahead and commit this code then. So I'm going to bring up terminal and perhaps bring it up so you can also see it better. So let's say git add all and git commit. OK, and we're calling, calling it step two, just like that. So I'm going to also go to step three, my uh, notes. Uh, it's a little bit of a process, as I mentioned. It's just to make sure that I can tell you everything that I plan to basically tell you for this uh, chapter. I'm going to check out that code in my notes as well. All right, perfect. So let's have a look at uh, a little bit about properties inside abstract classes. Abstract classes at the moment we've only talked about having methods in them, but abstract classes can also have properties in the exact same way that a normal class can have properties, kind of. So, um, I mean, abstract classes are kind of like a subset of normal classes in that way, in that they can have many different things, but there are some things that they can't achieve simply because they're not normal classes, okay? So what we're gonna do in this, <clears throat> in this example is to actually add a little functionality to this can run uh, abstract class. And we're going to expose a little variable here <clears throat> that is called type. So this type, what it's going to do is to reflect back on the instance that is implementing can run. And if that instance is an instance of cat, then it's going to return a string that says cat. However, if that instance is not a type, cat, then we're going to print just something else. OK? And this is just to demonstrate to you that an abstract class, just like any other class, can have reflection. And it can actually look at the type of itself. Because in this, I mean, if you just look at this abstract class, it is the only class that you know about. And <clears throat> there is no cat class. There is no dog class. And it doesn't know anything else. So self, in this case, if you say self, or sorry, this, uh, this is can run, right? So there is nothing else at the moment. However, in the in the context of cat, since it's in extending can run, this would refer to cat, not can run. Super refers to can run. OK, so if you add some code in here that uses the keyword this, that this is going to be then translated when it's brought into other classes to this in the subclass, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to show you an example. Let's have a look at it. Let's go and expose a little variable here called string. 
get type, okay? Then we're gonna say, if this is cat, return cat, else return something else, all right? So we're reflecting back upon our own type. And if that's a cat, we just say the type is cat, otherwise it's something else, all right? So just to demonstrate this, we're going to have a look at adding another class in here. We are going to call it a dog class. So let's say class, and we're going to say dog extends can run like that. Okay, it's just an empty class that extends the can run class. And inside this test it, we're going to say final dog is and dog instantiate that. And then we're going to say dog run. Okay, because remember, Run is not, as you can see, we haven't implemented run in the doc class. However, run is not an abstract abstract um, method anymore. It actually has default implementation, meaning that any class that extends the can run class will actually grab a copy of this run functionality in here, and it will be able to call it. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to hot restart the application. So let's have a look at the types that are then printed here. As you can see, um let's see oh we're not actually printing the types i believe so instead of doing cat run let's say cat type log and then dog type log remember this type is nothing that the dog class actually has implemented this type is coming from this variable that we implemented in can run abstract class okay so i'm gonna press command s and perhaps do a hot restart and as you can see for cat the type is being brought back to us as cat. However, when the time came to call the type and grab the type from the dog, which is here, it returned something else, simply because we didn't actually implement any code in here that could reflect, reflect back and say, is it a cat or is it a dog? We didn't actually do the dog. So let's say else if this is dog, and you could say return dog, Okay, and then I'm gonna do a hot restart, and it, now you can see it says cat and dog. Okay, but I'm just gonna remove the dog from here because this was just to inform you that yeah, you can reflect back on the, the subtypes that are implementing your abstract class. Okay, let's go ahead and commit this code as well because it is actually working as expected. So, git add all, and then git commit step free, just like that. I'm going to go to my notes as well and go to um, step four, basically, in here. So I can have all the code that I want to demonstrate to you. All right, that's done. So let's then go ahead to the next point. As I mentioned in the beginning of this chapter, abstract classes can have constructors. Uh, however, abstract classes cannot be directly constructed. They need to be constructed using their uh, subclasses. So if you have a can run abstract class, you can't ever go and say final foobar is equal to an instance of can run. You can't construct an instance of that abstract class. However, you can have constructors on your abstract classes that then your super classes are, or your subclasses, sorry are going to invoke in their own constructors, OK? So what we're going to do in this uh, part of the exercise is to have a look at introducing, uh, instead of going with string types, we're going to introduce a little enumeration in here. And we're going to call it type. So like this. And we're going to say cat and dog, all right? And what we're going to do then is to kind of tell this can run abstract class that, hey, you can contain something called type. And it is a variable, and it has no return value. So if you do this, you can now all of a sudden see that, hey, there is a getter string get type in here. But we're actually going to say final string, sorry, final type type. So you can see in here, now we have a final variable in our abstract class. And quite correctly, the Dart analyzer in here is telling us that, hey, you can't have that type without actually instantiating or initializing it. You could say it is equal to type dog. However, 
any class that extends your can run class is just going to be having the type dog. And that's not correct. So the right way of going around doing this is getting help from Visual Studio Code in here. I'm going to create a constructor here, as you can see. So I'm going to say, here's a constructor for this can run, and it expects a type. I'm going to make it a required parameter as well. And I'm going to make this a constant constructor. OK? So now can run has a, a constructor. And quite correctly, again, Dart Analyzer is saying, hey, can run has a constructor, but the subclasses aren't calling this constructor. So what happened here is that as an interface, this can run says, hey, I want to hold on to something called type of type type. <laughs> so it is the type of like this class. Uh, and sorry that it, it of type type, that was really strange, but I think you understand. So it's a variable uh, with this type. And inside its constructor, it requires the subclasses to pass that value forward to the can run class. Cat isn't doing that and dog isn't doing that either. So what we need to do in here is to add a constructor first to our cat class. So the way to do that, we say in here const cat because it's a constant, and we call super and pass the type of cat. Like that. So we say cat class is immutable, and you could also actually mark it as immutable if you want to, saying that it doesn't change. And uh, that's not something I'm going to do here, but you, you're more welcome to do that if you want to. And we're creating a constant constructor here, and we're calling our super, which is can run, saying that the type of this class is cat. Then we can do the same thing in here. We go and add the constructor to the dog class. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say const, bring the code up so you can see better, add dog, and it calls super of the type dog, just like that. All right. So now that we've looked at that, oh, here it's also saying const. Should probably just say const probably should say const there. Yeah. Okay. So now that we've done that, um, we should talk about constructors on abstract classes. Um, I don't want to go too much into mixins because that's something that I mentioned that we're going to talk about in another chapter. Um, but mixins are kind of like abstract classes, but they don't have all the whistles and all the jazz around them. Mixes are very simple classes, kind of, that uh, cannot be constructed. And they are kind of like a very simple interface. Abstract classes can kind of work like mixes in that they can be brought into another class. Uh, one to many of abstract classes can actually be mixed into other classes using the with keyword. If those abstract classes don't have constructors. If you create a constructor for an abstract class, it no longer acts like a mixin. In that it cannot, like you cannot bring multiple of those classes into your subclasses and mix them in using the with keyword. Okay. But since in this chapter we're not talking so much about mixins and we're not talking about the with keyword, you don't have to really worry about that right now. But just know that by adding a constructor to your abstract classes, you're kind of like limiting the way that they can be used inside your Flutter or Dart applications. So um, and as I mentioned, we won't go too much into mixins and why they're so useful. I will create a separate chapter about that, OK? So now that we've done this, um, as you can see, we have this little type in here. Um, there is no type uh, getter anymore that is being computed, like a computed property. So we can just do a hot restart of the application, have a look at the logs. And as you can see, these logs in here, cat type log is logging type cat because type is a new enum or enum that we've created. Um, and then the dog one's type is actually typing or writing this type dot dog which is this enumeration up here. And I apologize. I, I probably should have ch chosen a better name uh, instead of type. Uh, it just makes it a little bit confusing when I'm talking about type of type. I understand that, but I think you get the point. 
So let's go ahead and commit this code as well. It's working as expected. So I'm going to bring it here. Let's git add all and then git commit step four. Okay. So let's see if I have to, there's one more commit, I believe, that we have to do. So uh, I'm going to bring up my terminal here as well and check out last bit of code that we have to go through. Okay. So um, what we're going to do now is to actually have a look at using abstract classes as mixins. So you get a little bit of an idea how a mixin works and how you can actually increase the possibility of your abstract classes being used as mixins in the case, in a sense that they can act in multiple abstract classes can be used and brought into the same class, kind of like subclassing, but you can subclass multiple abstract classes without constructors, okay? So let's remove this type for now, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, so we don't need it anymore, okay? Um, so we're also gonna remove the must call super from void run on can run, so let's remove this, okay? And we're also um, going to remove the type from our can run like that, all right? So inside this uh, run function in our can run, what we're going to do instead is just going to say running, okay? Like this, and then log it. That's our can run class is an abstract class, is a real abstract class with a simple implemented function called run that it just logs running dot, 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 okay? And there's no must call super on it at all, all right? Okay, so that was that was good cleaning up. Um, and let's go ahead then and remove this uh, call to a constructor on super because we don't have that anymore. And we're going to remove it from here as well. And for now, we're going to remove all this code in tested. All right, so let's save this. And yeah, it seems to be OK right now. Now, let's add a new uh, abstract class to our project. And we're going to call it can walk. Just like we have can run, we're going to have a can walk. So abstract class can walk. OK. And what we're going to do in here, just like the can run, we're going to add a void function in here, say walk, and or just say walking dot log all right so let's have a look also at this dog class we're going to remove it because we don't need it anymore in this um in this part of this chapter so sorry dog bye bye and then what we're going to do in here let's have a look at our cat class um to actually remove this run in here as well okay so instead of using extends that extends kind of like uses the can run class. We're going to use the with keyword in here and say can run and also can walk. And you can see Dart is completely happy about this. It says, OK, this is fine. However, you can't change this to extends, right? Because extension, like when you're doing extends, you're saying that I want to subclass another super class. And that is only allowed by one class. So you can only subclass one class, not two or more. Okay, so um, what we're also going to do in here is to change our test it function so that we can actually call this run and walk, uh, these run and walk functions on our cat instance. So let's say final cat is an instance of cat, just you can see here. And then we're going to say cat walk, all right, or just run first. And then we say cat walk. I'm going to bring up the console in here. We're going to hot restart the application. And you can see it says running and walking. So by having non-constructible abstract classes in Dart, you can bring those abstract classes into your subclasses um, more than just like you can bring more than one abstract class into your subclasses and mix them in. All right. And there is also a better way of running these functions in a chain. You can say cat dot dot run dot dot walk. And this does the exact same thing instead of you having to repeat the word cat many times. Okay. So also working. So now you got a taste of how it actually looks like to have abstract classes that are non-constructible 
and you can bring them into other classes as mixins. All right. So using the width keyword, of course. So let's go ahead and commit this code as well. So I'm going to say git at all and git commit step five. All right. So just to wrap things up, uh, I think we have gone through five examples for abstract classes. You get the idea how they work. We looked at the computed properties for abstract classes. We've looked at uh, constructors. We've looked at making abstract classes like mixins and also have abstract methods and implemented functions inside our abstract classes. So um, just to wrap it up, when abstract classes don't have constructors, they are kind of like mixins, which we're going to talk about in another chapter. So they can be brought into subclasses multiple times, different ones. OK? So um, and as I mentioned, mixins are something that are that I think they need their own chapters, the chapter. So I'm going to create a separate chapter for mixins. I don't know if it's going to be followed right after this chapter or not, but I will definitely make content about that as well. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, chapter on abstract classes. We have a Discord group as well, which you can join. I'm going to put the description of that Discord group at the bottom of this um, tutorial or a chapter. Please join this the Discord group. If you have any questions, we'll, there's more than 500 of us in that Discord group, and we'll be more than happy to help you. So I hope to see you in the next chapter.